you're welcome to my channel. Now, right here in this video, I want to solve cube root of i. Yes, I want to properly solve the cube root of eta. And now, I will go ahead and say that the cube root of eta should give us a complex number. I can say a plus i b in standard form like that, right? And now, to actually solve this, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Well, let's just go ahead and raise both sides to the power three. So I'll raise both sides to power three like this. I raise this to the third power and this also to the third power. So you will see that the cube is going to cancel the cube root like that. And uh, we're going to have, we're going to have I on the left hand side is equal to, now on the right hand side, we go ahead and expand this and we're going to have A to the third degree, all right? Plus, what well, we're just going to make use of binomial expansion for this. Plus, we have uh, three A square IB like this and uh, plus 3a ib squared like that and again we're just gonna take the cube of that and it's ib all cubed and now we can go ahead and simplify this further okay where you know that ib product square is gonna become i square and b square where i is square root of negative one so the square of that is just gonna give us the square of this is just going to give us negative 1. So that becomes negative right here. So we're going to have negative 3ab squared. And again, since i is raised to the power 3b is raised to the power 3, and uh, we know that our i squared of negative 1, okay, so i cube would become i squared times i. Okay, so we can have i squared to be negative 1 times i. That's going to become negative 1 times i. That's just negative i. So we have negative i b cube. And on this side, we just have a cube plus 3a squared ib and this is i now i want you to know that since this is a complex number okay we call it i then we believe that there is a zero here we have zero plus one i like this one i such that this is a complex number it actually has a real path okay so we believe that the real path right here is zero that is why it didn't show here okay and the coefficient of this i is just one the unit complex number so we have the real path we have the imaginary path and we're going to equate the real path to the real path which is zero the imaginary path to the imaginary path which is one now take note of this imaginary path is known we know an imaginary path when we know the coefficient of the imaginary number okay while the real path is just the other the other side that doesn't have the imaginary number i which is square of negative one so because of that, I'm going to equate zero to all the real numbers. That is a cube, the numbers independent of i. That is a cube and um, this negative three a b squared. And again, I'm going to equate the imaginary path to one. That is one, which is the coefficient of the i that I said is equal to all the numbers that contains i, but not the i. That is going to become three a squared b and this one minus b q k and from here um, it will be necessary for us to solve for our values of a and b because it is in the values of a and b that we will determine like i said earlier that the cube root of i will become a plus i b the cube root of i will be give us a complex number so it is therefore necessary to find the values of a and b we plug this right there you can just simply call that the cube root of i and take note that since we can define this to be the real part and this to be the imaginary part a is the real part and b is the imaginary part it simply means that to have a complex number right here a and b should be real values all right so we find real values of a and b not the complex values the real values of a and b such that when we bring it in right here with the i combination we're going to have an imaginary number all right so we're going to solve for real values of a and b real values only okay so we proceed and here we can call this uh, equation one, you can call this one, and you can call this two. Equation two as well. And um, from equation one, we can observe something. From one, I will want make you to observe that since a is common right here, we can just factor that out, and we're gonna have we're just gonna have that zero is equal to a like this. You know, this is just a, and we here we have a square will remain right there, and here we just have negative three b square, and. For us to have zero on the left hand side simply means that the product of a and the bracket is giving us zero 
then it follows that it's either a is zero or the bracket is zero let me just write that out so it's either a is equal to zero or a square minus 3b square is equal to zero all right so you have a product of two numbers giving you zero then it follows that one of them is zero or the both of them are zero so there's a possibility of that happening all right that's why i'm just equating this like that so from here we know that a is zero that means we have a value of a how about b well we are going to make this on the value of a to get the value of b and right here we just know that this equation is equal to zero so from here we know that the value of a is zero that simply means if you take the value of a right into equation two you know you got the value of a from equation one so if you plug it in into equation two to solve for the value of b at that point we're going to have zero right here the whole of this becomes zero and we're just left with one equals to negative b cube let me just write it out like that one equal to negative b cube then what do you know we have that one equal to negative b cube then it follows that um we can multiply one on both sides negative one on both sides we have negative one on the left hand side is equals to negative and negative become positive b cube like that and that follows that we're going to have cube root on both sides so we're going to have cube root of negative one to become b okay we actually want to solve for value of b this is cube root so cube root of negative one is just negative one negative one is equals to b mind you cube root of negative one is it has a real value which is negative one and they also have two complex values what i said we are not looking for the complex solution of b right the imaginary solution we're looking for the real solution so here we have negative b so when a is zero then it follows that b is negative one so i'm going to erase my work and i'm just going to show you here that when a is zero it follows that b is equals to negative one and this form our first solution for this right here okay remember we still have an equation to work with but we still have equation two to work with we were only dealing with equation one which gave us this let's just write this in another form well from here i can say that a square is equal to i can say that a square is equals to 3b square like this right you now you take 3b squared to the part to the right hand side negative 3b squared to the right hand side becomes positive 3b squared now from equation 2 okay from equation 2 what do we observe well from equation 2 it follows that 1 is equals to all of these okay and since b is common i can just say let me take b out all right and i factor b out and i will have that 1 is equals to the bracket of 3a square minus b square you know i'm just taking one b out in each of them and i'll have the b out like that and you observe right here let me just call this three right and you observe that from equation three that a square is equals to 3b square so in, in place of a square on this i can just put 3b square so we're gonna have one is equals to now in place of a square you put 3b square we have three here so in place of a square, we're going to put 3b square like this, right? And we subtract b square from that, and we multiply it by b outside like that. Well, we can just go ahead and evaluate this. We have 1 equals to this time. This is just giving us 9b square minus b square. Out we have b. Okay, all right? Now let me move and solve from here. So I'm going to have, in this bracket, I'm just going to have what? We solve everything... We're solving everything so in this bracket i'm just going to have 9b square minus b square that is 8b square so in this bracket i'm just going to have 8b square 8b square and out of the bracket i just had my b still there so i can just go ahead and multiply them through and i'll have one equals to 8b cube okay so to actually solve for our b right here i'll have that one over eight is equals to b cube and i can go ahead and say let me take the cube root of both sides so i'll have the real value for one over for the cube root of one over eight is one over two. You know, cube root of one is just one, and cube root of two of eight is just two. So we have that to be equal to b. Remember, we've taken cube root of both sides. So we have our b to be one over two. So remember, we solve for a and we use a to get b. All right. So now we've solved for b. Let's use b to get the value or values of a. Okay. So, so since we just solved for our b. I can say from equation 3, let's substitute the value of b into equation 3 to solve for a, since it's just the simplest equation that we can make use of to get the values of a. So since our a from equation 3, it follows that our a 
all right square is equals to 3b square then what do we have for our b where b is equals to 1 over 2 so we can just say a square is equals to 3 1 over 2 square in place of b we just put the value of b 1 over 2 and again it follows that a square is equals to you know one square is just one and uh, this is product and uh, two square is just four so here you can just have three over four so to solve for a value of a you just have to say take the square root of both sides so we're going to have that a is equal to square root of three over two and remember we are taking square roots so it follows that positive square root of three over two will give us positive of square root of three over two square is going to give us a square and as well the negative of it is just going to give us a square so we're going to have this or negative square root of three over two let me write that one so it follows that for b equals to one over two then a can be square root of three over two or square, negative square root of three over two okay let me just give you the final solutions or the final values of a and b which solves our problem now right here I'm going to give to you that when a is 0, b is negative 1, that follows that the cube root of i, which I told you earlier to be a plus ib, is going to become, well, where a is, what are those values? Where a is 0, just plug in 0 right here, just have the 0, plus where b is negative 1, just plug in negative 1 for b here, that becomes negative 1 times i, that's just negative i. So that is 0 minus i, which is just negative i. You follow that cube root of i is negative i. Again, when we have cube root of i, where this is 3, okay, that was for the first values of a and b. Here, we have that when b is 1 over 2, a will be root 3 over 2. So we just bring those things right in here. We have root 3 over 2 for a, over 2 for a, and plus i times when b is 1 over 2 we had that for a so this follows that cube root of i is also square root of 3 over 2 plus this and again cube root of i can also be well here when b is 1 over 2 we had two values of a which was negative 3 over 2 and we have positive 3 over 2 and negative 3 over 2 so it follows that negative square root of 3 over 2 was for a plus Remember, we still have i there, and b was 1 over 2. So the value of b repeats while the value of a varies with sign, all right? So with this, we can say that the cube root of i is just negative i, or the cube root of i is this complex number, square root of 3 over 2 plus i times 1 over 2, or negative square root of 3 over 2 plus i times 1 over 2, like that. So the cube root of i can be those three things, all right? Not just two solutions. Uh, should I say I'm sorry for the other time? We had only two solutions, which was due to unseenable stuff. Okay, but right now we can actually go ahead and correct this. And um, this may not be very clear enough. Yeah, this may not be very clear enough. Let me clean up this up and write my solution very well for you guys to see in both you. So these three values, these three values right here, though they are complex values, and of course, are the solutions to cube root of i when we solve for only complex only real values of a and b okay guys thanks for watching this video please subscribe to this channel